One of the most popular roles in the game is the wing back, but what is the difference between the different roles you can select? Defense, support and attack? Today we find out. Hello again everyone. Now, FM24 is out and we're all wanting to build our own tactics and you'll see a lot of people using wing backs. But are we using them correctly and do we know what they're doing? Today we're going to look at the role and the different duties you can use. We're going to set up with Inter Milan. This is just a little 4 3 3 I've knocked up that I'm working on at the minute. And we're going to focus on Denzel Dumfries. He's going to be our weapon of choice for this little guide. So we're about to take on Sassuolo. We'll keep reloading that game and play it with attack, support and defend. And then you'll be able to see in game where the difference is in positioning. Now, first off, we'll start with wing back attack and look at the set PIs that he's already got. So there he is on wing back attack and you can see there's two set PIs cross and byline. Ask players to get to the ball as high up the pitch as possible in wider areas before attempting the cross and get further forward, which goes without saying when he's on wing back attack. Okay, the first thing you'll notice that even when the ball's on the other side of the pitch down here, you can see Dumfries over there, he will still make advancements down this side of the pitch. Kind of letting go his defensive responsibility because he wants to be an effect in the higher part of the pitch. Let's play this on. barella has got it, you can see Dumfries itching, itching to get forward, off he goes, thinks better of it, but then as Taram gets the ball, off he goes again. Now he's pretty much sat in a midfield position, whereas his opposite fullback, DeMarco, still in a traditional position, but Dumfries is up there, ready to cause havoc down this side of the pitch. What that does mean is he's got further to get back. You can see the, the gap there that Sassuolo could potentially exploit. So that's something to bear in mind when you're building a formation that you might need to cover for him if you want him to be one of your main attacking threats. The next thing to look at is the way he acts. He basically acts like a winger just from a withdrawn start point. If we see him here, you'll see the attacking intent he has when he gets the ball. Pavard gives him it and now he's got it. Now in another position, a full back maybe, a more withdrawn wing back, he might look to pass the ball, but he just sees this big gap down here to attack very much like a winger, dribbling, forcing his way high up the pitch. Look how high up he is now. He's one of the main attacking threats. What it does mean is you'll always have a threat down this right-hand side. You can see there, Fratesi's got the ball. The inside forward, Mkhitaryan, is tucked in. So Dumfries is dominating this half of the pitch. So you've always got an outlet with a wing back on attack. Fratesi ignores him this time, but look at the gap he's got. And he's made that ground up. When you look at key attributes for the wing back, you'll notice that there's not a lot of difference between that and a winger. The only difference being mental attributes come into play for the wing back on attack because he's got a defensive part to play as well. But the attacking things, such as your technicals and also your physicals, very, very similar, so they have very similar roles. You've just got to bear in mind that your wing back's got a lot of space to cover. You can see how important he is from an attacking perspective by the amount of key passes he has, two from fullback, and of course the crosses as well, nine. And if you check out the pass map from the match, you can see how high up he is, basically playing in that midfield zone. So I've reloaded now, only changes, Dumfries will be a wing back on support on this one. We'll have a quick look at his hardcore did player instructions first. So there he is, wing back support, and the only thing that's added to him, hardcore, that is get further forward. To establish when you use a wing back on attack, you're using him as one of your main attacking threats. But on support, he's there to do just that support the attack rather than be one of the main attackers. This shows it here Hakan gets the ball and he receives it. Now, if he's on attack, he might be looking to break down the side here, start dribbling. Instead, plays a more sensible ball, still offering a passing option. Again, Pafad. Finds Megatarian and Dumfries, he's hanging back, he's not overlapping. Like a wing back on attack would be bombing down there, giving them the overlap option because he wants to cover all that flank. Instead, he holds his position wide, offering a different option, in fact, coming inside and passing more. So they'll probably look to do that more than hit that byline, find the easier pass, support the attack. Attribute wise, the only big difference in the key attributes from an attack to a support is a bit of expressiveness. If you look at the wing back on attack, Especially on Flair, you can see it's highlighted. They feel like that's a key attribute. You drop it down with support. Everything stays the same. Flair is dropped. Play stats from this match. You can see another two key passes, but he's crossed the ball far less. Only four times on this occasion. And as far as the pass map goes, you should see a big difference from the wing back on attack. You can see how much deeper he is. Opting to join in the attacks in a passing sense rather than breaking through, acting like a winger. So last one now, it's wing back on defence. Probably the most underused of all of them, I think. So wing back on defence actually has the most PIs set, take fewer risks, cross from deep and hold position so instantly you know it's a more defensive wing back. So what you'll get with a wing back on defence is a much safer option, let's take a look, you can see Dumfries down there, Pavard's got the ball, he's offering himself but he's not pushing forward, as it goes into Hakan there's absolutely no intention of providing 
an overlapping run down the right hand side. Barella's got it now. Again, ignores it. He's very much in line with his central defenders, playing it much safer than either the support or the attack as it comes forward still. Barella's got it now. Look at the space in front of him, but he decides not to go for it. Even though the player in front of him is tucked in, he still remains very deep. Just a much safer option and gives you a different slant on what you can do. If you want your wing back to get a little bit higher but be more of a ball player, this is the role for you. You can see him waiting for the ball, getting it, has a little look inside, gives it, but again, he's not over committing. He's playing it safe, but all the time being a little bit higher up than a fullback would. But he doesn't feel the need to push on, even there. Look, look at the gap he's got, but he's just holding, supplying support to his central defenders. Of course, by not overcommitting, what it does mean is when you do lose the ball, he's in a better position to get back in line and provide cover. There you can see he's now in line with centre back. There's loads more cover. He's not overcommitted. Key attribute wise, very similar story to the wing back on support. Your wing back is still an aggressive player, so there's still a lot of key attributes attacking wise. But when you drop it to defend, the only thing that drops down is flair. So it's still a really taxing role. You need a good player to do it. You can see the change in the match stats. He's much more of a passer than a crosser. Two key passes, but only one cross attempted. So that's a super basic guide on the differences between defense, support, and attack. Hopefully you can see them in match. Now this year, things can get a little bit funky with the play instructions you can add. Specifically the cutting side with ball there that you couldn't do last time with wing backs on attack. Look, if we drop it to attack, you can still do it. So you can still get the ball and cut inside. The difference between that and an inverted wing back, for example, would be this wing back will stay out wide and then cut in while your inverted wing back will already be inside. Lots that you can do though to affect your team shape. Also something to point out, a bit more advanced stuff that your wing backs will perform a little bit differently depending on what role's in front of them. But today was all about what you can expect from that role in isolation.